Well, hello! Today we have an exciting box from Daitone and Ishii. But just before we get into that, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the little bell icon if you want to be alerted when I upload videos. So, what have we got today? This is, as I said, a joint venture between Diatone and Ishin. It's called the ER349SX, which sounds quite similar to Diatone's own uh, GTR349, but slightly different, but not too much. But we'll, we'll go into that when we get to it. So, here is the box. It got a bit squished in the post, but it seems to be intact. So, let's have a look what's in it. And in the box we have a something about service from Diatone, sticky sheet, the quad itself which is kind of tied into this cardboard bit, although one of the ties had broken, I guess when it got squashed, so I'll, I'll unclip that later. We've got some instructions here which are, well it's an instruction sheet, which is pretty good because basically this is the, the stack, that's specifically the flight controller and it's like how you would connect up various things to it. Two sets of props, these are Gemfan 3052s, and as typical with Dytan stuff, you've got a nice bunch of accessories here. In here, it's about cable ties, packs of spare screws, look, it's even got their types and lengths specified, which is really nice. Prop nuts, two battery straps, and there's already one on the quad. There's a little beeper board, an XT30 connector, another two little nuts, four spare screws, uh, a couple of, well, one, two, three, four, five of these little silicon, I think, sticky pads for the battery and a connector for something or other. I'm not sure what that is. Let's just unclip this from here and here it is. <clears throat> now, I wasn't lucky enough to have a go at one of the, the original Diatone um, R349s and you're probably wondering what the difference is because looking at the pictures, they look very similar. What has Ishin done that's different to what Diatone did before? And I think the answer is it's a slightly different frame. It's a stretch X frame, which is something like 140 something mil, like 143, 144. The original was 135. They've also changed this cover and they've put some little LEDs in front or on the top, I think. The rest of this is the, the mini Mamba stack, which is an F4 flight controller, uh, an ESC, which can run at 25 amps at 4S. The VTX is a TBS Unify, which got up to 800 milliwatts, crazy stuff. And we've got a Runcam Micro Swift camera at the front with a 2.1mm lens, which is looking really nice. This doesn't have a receiver in it. You have to add one. We seem to have a little squidgy coming out here to connect one. It kind of looks like, I'm not sure if that's the connector for uh, an RSXSR, which I haven't got. Um, I'll probably be sticking an XM Plus in there because I've got a couple kicking around. But um, yeah, it feels really nice. Uh, again, really solid. There's that's a really solid frame, there's hardly any flex in that. All the Diatone things I've flown before have been really solidly put together, so hopefully this is the case. Um, the soldering, I'm just a close up here on this bit, it's tiny, there's like a, <laughs> a gazillion connectors, may not be accurate, but it's all very quite neatly done and I wouldn't like to have to redo that myself because it's really small. Interesting point that the, um, the antenna for the VTX is held on completely horizontally. I mean, it's okay because you're going to be up like that most of the time. Interesting to see how the signal will work on that one. But um, yeah, well, next thing to do as always is uh, get a receiver fitted, get it onto beta flight and get it uh, set up and we'll see what happens from there. Okay, so let's connect in. And I have to say, I had some weirdness here and I was a bit confused by it. So if you look at what we've got here, ultimately I thought something had failed. If I move the quad around you'll notice nothing's happening. We haven't got the ability to calibrate the accelerometer and the accelerometer doesn't appear there. Now I had thought this is broken. Uh, the accelerometer has not been detected. I tried flashing the firmware back. Um, I tried different versions of the configurator and, and nothing was working. What I didn't realize is that this isn't necessarily detecting on hardware. It's basically what I'm using so you can go to configuration and I'd, I'd said things like oh well I can I can do that but what's the point nothing's happening because it's not there what I didn't appreciate is that if I then went and said save and reboot then reconnected look the accelerometer has mysteriously reappeared and now I can move the quad about which is um, well you know I've learned something I thought this was like hardware detection and what's there and then I thought this part was do I want to use it or not? Uh, so, you know, useful 
Uh, I feel a bit stupid for not knowing that, but that's the way it goes. And full marks for Diatone. I uh, I pinged them a message on Facebook and said, this is what I've got. And they replied um, and basically sent a bunch of pictures saying, look, I can replicate this by turning off my accelerometer here. So turn it back on again. And it worked. So, yeah, that's weird. And that's slightly embarrassing. But I present it to you just in case you hit this, because it looks like for whatever reason, the default firmware or default settings on this particular board turn the accelerometer off. Uh, perhaps they figure, hey, nobody wants self-leveling modes anymore, but there you go. Anyway, the config now, now I've got the accelerometer back again, <laughs> is uh, is as follows. We've got uh, Serial RX on UART 1. We've got uh, the Smart Audio VTX on UART 3. Configuration-wise, we've got DSHOT 600. I've added the motor stop. Um, I'm using their default, which is 8K 2K. I think it should be able to run an 8K loop. Obviously, the accelerometer's back on. No more about that. So I've changed my arming angle to 180. Uh, we've got SBUS set up there. And anti-gravity and dynamic filter were on by default. I've added the RX set as a beacon tone. I decided not to install the uh, separate beeper board in this occasion. Nothing special on power and battery. So pitch tuning was a little bit weird because their RC rates are different and they had super rates all over the place and very weird max velocities. So I'm just going to basically set this back to normal just so I've got my normal stuff there, essentially. Receiver-wise, I did manage to find um, an RXSR. I say find, I stole it out of another quad. Um, so I have used their existing plug. It was a bit of a squeeze to get in. I'll show you a picture here. There's not an obvious place to put it. And I just powered up just so I could show you that um, we've got the RSSI channel on AUX4 um, and there's nothing particularly special other than that. And modes wise, I've just got my normal arm angle, beeper, air mode and turtle mode. Probably turtle mode's not something I'll be using on this one. But I do think it's potentially a good way of being able to maybe get out of trees and stuff like that. OSD haven't changed an awful lot. It was set up quite reasonably. All they had was a bit of the uh, current draw and milliamp hours and, and that sort of stuff there, which I didn't particularly find useful, so I've just gone with my normal stuff that I put in there. You will notice it's running quite an early version of Beta Flight. This is 351 with the uh, Fury F4 OSD board. We could, of course, upgrade it, but I figured I'd, I'd fly it as default for now, and we'll see how we go. Anyway, let's uh, carry on to the actual flying part. Hello and welcome. Look, the sun's out, finally, although grey skies are still there. I've just spent the last half an hour sitting on the floor trying to basically bodge some sort of battery strap together. I didn't test this with a 4S 850, and the battery strap won't go around it. I didn't have a longer one, and I've kind of got this weird second one threaded around, but it seems pretty solid. <laughs> Hopefully it'll stay in place. Um, if not, well, that'd be a pain. Uh, I should have tested it beforehand. I just put a quick 3S in there when I was looking at stuff and it was all fine, but you know, my fault. Anyway, let's give this a flight. I'm gonna give a quick um, line of sight, make sure it's okay, and then we'll take it for a proper FPV flight. Um, should be fast. Looking forward to finding out if that is the case. Okay, this grass is very long. Let's try it. No problem getting up in the air. A little bit windy here. So, For a quick punch. Jesus Christ! <laughs> that was really quick. Really, really quick. This should be interesting. Anyway, let's bring it in and so we can test it properly. I haven't got much space to land. This grass has got even longer, so watch out hat. Here we go. So up we go for the maiden flight in FPV. And first impressions are very good. It feels nice and smooth. It feels fairly quickly, even on a small throttle percentage. You see here, I'm only in the 30% and it's uh, quite nippy. And I like the camera. I really like the uh, the Swift Micro. And uh, this one's doing a fine old job. I did notice on the 25 milliwatt power, it was a little bit flickety sometimes. 
But the general basis is, um, yeah, it flies out of the box pretty nicely. Now, I did have a conversation with Andy RC about this because he found that the original non-stretch version of this, the pure diatom one, had pretty nasty pids in terms of the D being too high and the P being too small. Now, we found when we had a quick look that the pids on this one did start out slightly differently. So, although this felt very good, I did notice that there was a slight warble as it went past me, and if that doesn't make sense to you, you'd, you'd have to hear it. It's like an oscillation noise, but without the oscillation that you can feel. So what I tried doing is decreasing the D and upping the P, uh, and that felt pretty good, but I also didn't feel like the P needed to go up, so here's what I ended up with, and um, this got rid of that sort of wobbly noise and still felt pretty good. So how's the speed? Well here's a quick speed run on the first battery and um, yeah, the answer is pretty fast. Now after that first battery I went ahead and I upped the power on the VTX to 200 just to see if it get rid of some of that little light bits of static there. And that seemed to do things a lot better. And I spent the next three batteries just having a good time. So what I found is control wise it's very good. I could do a nice long uh, low flights and be quite confident that it was going to hold that attitude and uh, height very nicely. It was pretty nippy. I could do like fast turns and go round trees. Lots of power. Lots and lots of power. So even at 40-50% it's feeling like really quite quick and as soon as you whip it up to 100% throttle it's very, very fast indeed, and it absolutely screams. The noise is amazing. Um, I'll, I'll give you an impression of what that looks like, because I was trying to film it from um, on the ground in in the long grass, and what I had, unfortunately, was the problem that I was too far away to see it. The quad was actually visible in that fly pass for about four frames. If you slow it down, you might just see this little speck going across at this incredible rate. But yeah, this thing screams. And not just on um, a straight line as well. It was fantastic just to go along and doing a punch and you were miles up in the air and you had, of course, loads and loads of times floating around to do whatever you wanted to. There was plenty of time to do manoeuvres, do little inverted your spins or flips or rolls and stuff like that. So yeah, after uh, a few batteries I was very confident in how it would handle and how it would fly and quite happy to sort of fly a bit harder and, uh, you know, nice and low to the ground and, and trying to get some gaps and uh, all sorts of things like that. The only thing I did note, and this is either me needing to tune it a little bit more or this is perhaps something to do with the slightly different configuration of the Stretch X is that sometimes as I'm coming around into a corner I found out my, my yaw would be slightly off. I'd have to sort of overcorrect again and that might be because it's not a true X and that's a case of getting used to it or perhaps something I have to tighten up on the yaw to make it a bit snappy. My problem is whenever I'm thinking this needs tuning I'm generally out flying and I was like wee I'm having a great time here I can't be bothered to like look at the little one or two niggles and uh, sort of try and sort it out I'm too busy like going yay this is, <laughs> this is good fun and then I run out of batteries and that's the end of it. So you see I'm getting about three minutes per battery on the 850 4S's uh, and despite the strap not fitting uh, this felt like about the right size that certainly did not feel heavy. Uh, there was so, so much power available to me. Uh, not a problem. Just just a short strap for some reason. I, I Just as a side note, nothing to do with this quad, but I am noticing that telemetry receivers, the, the X4R and the RXSR, always seem to have sort of a worse RSSI signal than like the XM+. I know they do, they do more because they're obviously sending a signal back, but I would be like 90-something in the XM Plus and this drops really quite low even though it's just like you know 100 200 meters away and I'm not too far out of line with it but that's the side note. I also took with me a little 650 milliamp hour 3S battery which actually did fit the original strap finally and I wanted to see how it would go I figured you know you wouldn't have the same amount of fun on it but would it produce a decent flight at least 
And, you know, it really does. It's not too sluggish at all. It's It hasn't got that raw power and speed, but you, you're not thinking, oh, you know, come on, Throttle, do something. So it does, does produce a, a reasonable flight. I mean, this I wouldn't say this is anywhere near a beginner quad, but if you wanted to limit your speed and power somewhat and you didn't want to mess around with the throttle limiting, then, yeah, you could fly the 3S if you want to and you could have a perfectly good time. Um, it's just that when I go out, I like to really blast it as, as much as possible. If you're wondering if I'm uh, being somewhat a dangerous flyer to the... Uh, tractor here this is uh this is my brother-in-law's tractor and he's perfectly happy with me flying around him and certainly in a case of quad versus tractor i'm always going to be on the tractor so yeah 3s quite reasonable if you've got a bunch of 3s batteries you can fly along and you can still have a good time but for me it's all about the, the power that this thing can produce the absolute speed that this thing can produce feels really quickly unfortunately i haven't got anything to measure it with and you can obviously see when we really give it full beans, the battery's not going to last beyond a few seconds of doing so. So it's not like you could do it consistently. But my goodness, it's fantastic just to be able to put the throttle down and get that much out of it. So yeah, I had a fantastic time flying this thing. Wow, what a fantastic little quad. Really fast, really powerful, very manoeuvrable. I really liked it. The only problem I had, of course, was the battery strap. I've since swapped that one out for this Jep RC one, which is much, much longer, and actually goes around the, the 850. Here was the original, and you can see, even just going around the battery, it barely makes it. So as soon as it gets uh, threaded through, because it actually sort of goes in and out a bit there, that's where it, it's just too short. So you need something bigger so you can really secure it nicely. That's the only problem I had, that and a little bit of tuning. But other than that, really, really happy with the way this flew. Now, I put it on the scale with this 850 battery and it came to 252 grams. <laughs> so maybe I'm starting to see the reason for the shorter battery cable because it's literally like two grams difference, which is probably that cable. Uh, but, you know, you'd have no problem in getting it down to 250 if you just used a, a slightly smaller battery you didn't have little bits of uh, cable ties and heat shrink everywhere you didn't need to. It's very, very close and it, it wouldn't take much effort to get this under that Magic 250 and have something insanely powerful and fast to fly around. The only problem I had, of course, was the battery strap on it. So, when I'm editing these things, after I finish, I go through and watch it again. And one thing I noticed at the beginning, I mentioned there were some spare battery straps. So after I did all this, complained about the battery strap being too small, I thought, uh-oh, they didn't put a bigger one in the box, did they? And I just didn't notice it. And uh, yeah, they had. So <laughs> what I've got now is the larger battery strap. And as you can see, the larger battery strap, which was included all the time, goes around quite happily and there's no problem. So every time I moan about the battery strap, uh, just know that uh, somehow I've got it wrong yet again and it was there all the time. Uh, I put it on the scales, it's still weighing at 252 although my scales do only go up in twos, so it's still borderline. It's just a case of, I think, either using a slightly smaller battery, as I said, or maybe taking little bits off, just little bits of cable tie and stuff, and different brands of battery weigh differently, uh, and you'd be there. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. I didn't want to refilm it, because I'd already kind of committed to moaning about the battery strap, and it would be weird to go back and change it. Anyway, back to the scheduled programming. Obviously, the difference here with this three inch over something like five inches we're not carrying a gopro we're not carrying an hd camera this is just for flying around blasting around and um just having the dvr footage now people might be saying oh what about like a, a cadex turtles or a, a tarsier could you put that in not really not with this amount of room you've got left uh, if you want that sort of quad i'm sure rtf ones are going to be coming that will have this sort of thing for now um this in its purest form is just as it is is a fantastic flying quad and that run cam microsoft does a really good job i mean you could maybe mount something light on the top if you really wanted to but uh, that's not what it's about for me this is just um, a small quad for, for blasting around and having fun now i didn't really mention the leds because um i didn't really notice them they look like that they're, they're sort of kind of bright and maybe if you're flying line of sight it'd be useful or i'm trying to think if somebody was following you but then you'd have this behind you so not not as good but you know they're quite bright and stuff you can you can see them in the daylight it's just 
they weren't really applicable to what I was flying. But after a couple of quite disappointing 3-inch models, I think I have my new favourite 3-inch quad. This has finally displaced the um, Jep RC Sparrow as my favourite 3-inch and one that I will be flying a lot. I only just noticed, uh, even though my landings were quite clean, I can see these see-through props have green all around them when I just maybe clobbered a couple of bits of grass. Anyway, this has been the Diatone and Isheen ER349SX, snappy little name, and uh, it was supplied for review by Banggood, so thanks for Banggood, and of course you'll find uh, links down below, and I think at this time that I'm publishing, there's an offer for it, so check that out if you're interested. I hope this review's been helpful, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.